Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an absolutely incredible problem for you all today. Uh, this one was from the Christmas Special Mock Geometry Olympiad. So the same contest as the last video I did that wasn't a live stream. And it's number six on the exam. So it's the hardest one and it took me a while, um, but I found a really neat solution. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over it. So we have a triangle ABC uh, with in center I and in circle omega, and it touches A, B, B, C, and C, A at D, E, and F. And then we draw A, D, and we let it intersect the in circle at X. And we draw the parallels to A, D through E, and F, and we let them meet um, the in circle omega at Q and P. And then, we draw the circumcircles of XBQ and XPC, and we want to show that I lies on the common chord of those two circles. Um, so in other, way, in, a, in other words, it lies on the radical axis of them. All right, so one way to show that is we could show that I has the same power with respect to both those circles. Uh, but I had a lot of trouble just trying to figure out a direct way to do this. So I took an idea from one of my videos. Uh, I think it might have been 99 on my channel or somewhere around that. Uh, but when we have a lot of parallel lines like this um, in a circle, uh, often it helps to reflect a lot of the figure across the common perpendicular bisector of those three segments. Uh, so since F, Q, X, D, and E, P are all parallel, and they're all chords of the circle, they all have to have the same perpendicular bisector. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. Um, but I'm going to warn you guys, a lot of my proof is going to overlap the diagram. So I had trouble uh, trying to avoid this, and so I just let it happen. Uh, so sorry in advance for that. All right. So since F, Q, X, D, and E, P are all parallel, and they're all chords of the same circle, uh, they all have the same perpendicular bisector L. So I'm going to draw that perpendicular bisector. All right. And instead of showing I has the same power with respect to these two circles, which would solve the problem, I'm going to reflect both of those circles across L and show that I has the same power with respect to those two circles. So this is kind of a very weird idea, but I've seen it before. So like I mentioned, check out video 99, I believe it is. Uh, that was my motivation. So if we reflect the circle XBQ across L, uh, X goes to point D, uh, Q goes to point F, that's the whole motivation. Um, and B, we would have to reflect it across L. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm going to call this, this new circle omega 1, so the reflection of the circle through B, Q, and X across L, um, so that circle, and I'm going to let M be the center of it. And like I said, uh, if we reflect Q across L, it's point F. If we re reflect X across L, it's point B. And if we reflect B across L, it's point B prime. So this circle omega 1 um, with center M passes through B prime F and D. So it's a circumcircle of B prime F D. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand side here. So I'm gonna define W, or I'm gonna define double omega two uh, in the point C prime similarly. So I take this bigger circle through uh, X, C, and P, and I reflect it across L. Uh, so it passes through P and C. No, I'm sorry, it passes through D and E and also C prime, which is the reflection of C over L. So instead of showing that I lies on the radical axis of the two original circles, uh, we can show it lies on the radical axis of these two new circles. Uh, now there's a couple of things to note here. Um, first of all, uh, I, B, and M have to be collinear by symmetry. And that's because MFID is a kite. Um, so since MF is equal to MD and IF is equal to ID, um, MI, uh, that's the angle bisector of FID. So by symmetry, MD and I have to be uh, collinear. Um, actually, before I mention that, um, 
the points B prime X and C prime have to be uh, collinear by symmetry because they're reflections of B, B, and C across L. So those points are collinear. And since B prime C prime and B, C are reflections across L, uh, these three lines have to concur. So B, C, B prime, prime C prime, and L uh, concur at a point in G. And this is going to come in handy later um, because a lot of you will know that um, since GD is tangent to the circle, uh, by symmetry, GX also has to be tangent. Um, so G is actually the point that's in harmonic conjugation with B, C, and D. So I'll get to that later. Um, but first, I'm going to uh, mention what I said before. So M, F, I, D is a kite. So M, B, and I are collinear. Um, all right. And then by the same argument, I, C, and N are collinear. So I'm going to draw that. And we want to show that I lies on the radical axis of these two circles with center M and N. Uh, that's the same as saying ID is perpendicular to MN. Um, but we know ID is perpendicular to BC. So if I can show that MN is parallel to BC, that would solve the problem. And so that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to try to show MN is parallel to BC. And I'm going to try to do that using ratios. So I'm going to try to show that MI over BI is NI over CI. All right. So a lot of interesting stuff going on here. So how do, where do we go next? Um, so it's hard to directly um, show that the power of I with respect to these two circles is equal. But I'm going to use a trick, actually, that I thought of um, from IMO 2019 number six. So this was a lot earlier on my channel, and that's a very difficult problem. But what, I, what we can do is we can use Casey's theorem. Um, Casey's theorem, it allows you to find a formula for the distance between the centers of two circles. So the distance MI, it, it lets you get at that in a certain way. So I'm gonna write it out here. Um, Casey's theorem, it's, it says the difference between the powers of a point with respect to two circles. So I'm going to take point B prime, and we have this circle centered at M and the circle centered at I. So Casey's theorem gives us the difference between the power of B prime with respect to those two circles. So I'm going to put a link to Casey's theorem uh, in the description of my video. But I'm going to write it out here. So it says the power of B prime with respect to the in circle, which is omega, minus the power of B prime with respect to omega 1, which is this circle through B prime F and D. Uh, it's always equal to twice the distance between the centers of those circles. So it's twice IM uh, times the distance from B prime to the radical axis, which is in this case DF. Um, that's where the two circles intersect at. Okay, so this little d means the distance from B prime to the line df. Uh, so I'm going to draw the line df and I'm going to um, try to get the distance from B prime to it. So I'm going to let O uh, be the foot of the perpendicular from B prime to the line df. And so then this would be B prime O here. All right, so now I'm going to, uh, so this is, this is Casey's theorem right here. For any point, it doesn't have to be on either circle, but for any point, the difference between the powers of that point with respect to both circles is twice the distance between their centers times the distance from that point to their radical axis. All right, so the power of B prime with respect to omega uh, that's B prime X squared, because B prime X is tangent to the circle. And by symmetry, that's the same as BD squared. Um, the power of B prime with respect to omega 1, that's just zero, because B prime actually lies on omega 1. All right, so we can handle this side here. And this side, um, like I mentioned, this is B prime O. So I'm going to write it out. So I'm going to start out with the right side. So I am the same as MI. Um, this is B prime O. And this 
uh, is b prime x squared minus 0, which by symmetry is the same as bd squared, because they're both reflections across L. And bd squared, if you look closely, bdi is a right triangle. Um, and if we let h be this intersection point right here, uh, it's a well-known fact that bd squared is bh times bi. Uh, that can be very easily proven using similar triangles. Uh, so I'll leave that to you if you haven't seen it. So bd squared is bh times bi. And now we're getting close to where we want because we can find the fraction mi over bi. So, MI, so if we rewrite this, we have mi over bi is half of bh over b prime o. So then ultimately we wanted to show mi over bi was ni over ci. Um, so this gets us closer. And to find b prime h or bh over b prime o, uh, those are both perpendiculars to the line bf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create some similar triangles here. So I'm going to extend uh, df and bb prime, and I'm going to let them meet at a point w. Okay. And then we have similar triangles here. So wb prime o is similar to wbh. And so that means that bh over b prime o is wb over wb prime. And then we can do the exact same thing on the other side of the figure. So here I'm extending CC prime to meet DE at a point V, and I'm letting U be the foot of the, the, foot of the perpendicular from C prime uh, to DE. And so using the same argument, we have NI over CI is equal to VC prime over VC, or VC over VC prime. All right, so now we're really close. We have to show these two ratios are equal. And it's since WB is parallel to VC, it's easy to see that these two ratios are equal when G, W, and V are collinear. And it turns out that that's actually true um, by Desargues theorem. But we first have to note one thing. So it's a well-known fact that G, F, and E are collinear. And it's, it's easy to prove using poles and polars. So I'm gonna just write it out here. Um, but basically, since GX and GD are both tangent to the inner circle, A lies on the polar of G, and so G has to lie on the polar of A. So, so A lies on XD, which is the polar of G, because that's, those, that's um, X and D are the two tangents from G to the inner circle. And so, therefore, G has to lie on the polar of A, but E and F are the tangents from A to the inner circle. So G, F, and E have to be collinear. And that's the key here, because once we know that G, F, and E are collinear, then we can apply the Sarg's theorem. All right. So the Sarg's theorem, we're trying to show that W, V, F, E, and B, C all are concurrent. And that would mean they have to concur at point G. Um, but by the Sarg's theorem, that's true if and only if, uh, if you look at the triangles W, F, B, and V, E, C, um, W, F meets V, E at D, F, B meets C, E at A, and W, B, and V, C meet at the point at infinity on line A, D, uh, which in projective geometry is on the line A, D. So basically, by Desargues' theorem, since those three intersection points, A, D, and the point at infinity on A, D, they're collinear, then by Desargues' theorem, that means that W, V passes through G, actually, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just writing this out. We're applying Desargues' theorem on W, F, B, and V, E, C. I haven't done a video yet on Desargues' theorem. I think this is the first time I've used it on my channel. Um, but maybe I will do it sometime. And so that shows that G, W, and V are collinear, as I mentioned. Um, since W, B, and V, C meet at that point at infinity, which, is, which counts as being on the line AD. All right, so I'm gonna draw G, W, and V. 
and then that gets us what we want because that means these ratios had to be equal. So since WB is parallel to VC, uh, that means that um, by similar triangles, uh, it's easy to see that um, WB over WB prime has to equal VC over VC prime. It's kind of like a homophony centered at G uh, takes the segment WB uh, to VC and it takes B prime to C prime. So we have to have this ratio is equal. And if these ratios are equal, then these ratios, MI over BI and NI over CI have to be equal. So, and if that's true, uh, if MI over BI is NI over CI, that means MN is parallel to BC, uh, which means that MN is perpendicular to ID, which is what we wanted because if MN is perpendicular to ID, well, D is one of the two intersection points of these circles. So that means that ID has to pass through that other intersection point of the two circles. So if we call this J, uh, if MN is perpendicular to ID, then ID and J have to be collinear. And if that's true, then if we reflect everything across L, we get what we want, which is that I, K, and X are collinear. And that's exactly what the problem asks for, because that KX is the common chord of these two circumcircles. And so I lies on that common chord of the circumcircles of XBQ and XCP. So this was a super difficult problem. And if any of you can find a faster way to do it, I'm really curious. Um, but this is really a fantastic mock exam. Uh, the Christmas Geometry um, Mock Olympiad or Christmas Special Mock Geometry Olympiad. And I believe it was uh, ran by Amaro4. So uh, props to him. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.